Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Hello, Caro, Lizzie, Vanessa, Omar. I think we'll go ahead and get started, guys. I want to give um, give you guys some time to continue to ask questions this week. We're basically in crunch time trying to finish our first draft for this Saturday. Again, I'm going to give everyone through Saturday to try to finish. The way that we can get the most out of this week is for you guys to provide me something, something, uh, some development of your text, and also obviously bring in your questions uh, so that we can make use of this time that we have each day from eight o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock in the morning so that we can work together towards getting the best first draft as possible. The, the main focus today that I want to address based on some of, uh, some of the texts that I've been seeing so far, I think it's important to mention the importance of trying to align the evidence to the topic sentences. Now, we've been speaking a lot about trying to narrow down, in many of our cases, narrow down the topic or the scope of our topic sentence so that it's not too general. And so when we're looking at developing the paragraph and we're starting to use the evidence to support the main ideas, think about those citations that you included in your research matrix. The idea of the evidence is to provide examples, it's to provide details, it's to provide statistics, it's to provide facts about whatever it is that you're saying in your topic sentence. All right, so what I mentally, the mental exercise that I go through when I'm developing a body paragraph, I look at my body paragraph and then I think to myself, I say to myself, for example, now when I finish that sentence, for example, I'm thinking of different question words that are, that are possible, right? So I'm thinking to myself, okay, for example, how would this happen? Whatever I say in the topic sentence, right? Or I might say, for example, when would this happen? Or I could say, or I ask myself, for example, why would this happen? Well, this is one reason. This is another reason, right? And I'm, I'm mentally going through my, uh, I'm mentally going through this, this exercise looking specifically at my topic sentence because every topic sentence is different. Some topic sentences are going to talk mainly about how something happens. It may talk about why something happens and you can mix it up within the same paragraph. You can talk about how and why, whatever you want to talk about. But the point here is that the evidence should provide facts, details, examples, statistics, very specific ideas about whatever it is that you're saying. So when I'm looking and I'm reviewing student work, one of the first things that, that we talk about is making sure that we're specific enough in the evidence, right? And that what we're saying in the evidence from what other people are saying. We're, at, we're basically getting information from, from what other people say to provide the examples. We, the writer, we're not going to include examples. We need to include examples that are coming from an outside source. Why? Because it gives our writing more validity, right? It's, it's different than if I just say, oh, I think this, I think whatever. It's different when someone has spent six months doing a research invest a, a research project where they systematically collected data. They found statistical reports or they just found a way to analyze the information that is acceptable. And they presented results formally to the public. 
right? That's a, that's a whole different process than just saying, oh, well, I think this. And so that's why we, we depend on that outside information. But that outside information has to be specific. Otherwise, it doesn't really tell us a whole lot. If, if the information you're getting from the outside source is too general, it doesn't really help your argument because we lack details. Remember the English saying, or the, yeah, the, the English phrase that, that the devil's in the details, which means basically the, 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 the good stuff and usually more, it's, it's more demanding, but the good stuff is, are the details. That's what we want. Show us the details. So take a look when you're looking at developing your body paragraphs, take a, take a look at your, at your uh, topic sentence and look at your evidence. Don't worry about the analysis sentences at first, just focus only on the evidence. This was why we were working on the research matrix first, because I wanted us to ignore the analysis sentences for at, at first because I wanted us just to think in terms of evidence versus topic sentence. And again, that was why we were working on the research matrix is to try to focus, limit the focus on what we need to look at first, because if we don't have good evidence, well, the analysis sentences really lose value as well. There's not much point in the analysis if we don't have strong evidence, strong examples. Okay. So, that, that's the first thing I want to mention uh, when you guys are looking at developing your, your uh, body paragraphs. The second thing I want to mention is to remind you that the argumentative essay is also kind of a version of a problem solution essay. There's a lot of overlap. A problem solution essay, for our purposes, for the purpose of, of this argumentative essay, is that we're going to present the problem in the introduction paragraph, much like what we did in unit one. We're going to include at least one citation in the introduction paragraph that's going to support the problem. So again, it's not me saying, oh, I think the problem is this. No, there's actually research. There's actually literature out there that support that. Yes, this problem exists. Right. That's why I'm trying to convince you. This is why I'm even forming an argument about anything, because there's a problem. If we don't have a problem, then there's really no sense of trying to form an argument. So the introduction paragraph is designed to say, hey, we have something important to say. It's based on a problem. And in that introduction paragraph, after we introduce the problem with the citation, we're going to offer a transition to our thesis statement. It's going to be the last sentence of our introduction paragraph to say, okay, I just introduced the problem. Now the, the uh, thesis statement is my solution. It's my answer. All of that is happening in the introduction paragraph. We're introducing a hook to say, hey, listen to me. I have something important from the very first sentence. Then we're going to introduce the problem, getting into the details of the problem. And then a transition to say, okay, here's my answer. Here's my thesis statement, my answer. The thesis statement is the answer to the problem. The thesis statement is the one sentence, one general idea, the general answer to the problem. Then the rest of your essay paragraphs, body paragraphs one, two, and three are designed to unpack the thesis statement. They are designed to explain in detail the thesis statement. Again, the thesis statement is the answer. So the body paragraphs, the topic sentence that begins each of your body paragraphs should address not a problem, but the solution. Your whole argument is about trying to persuade someone because it is a version of a persuasive essay, but it's more involved because we have different arguments. But it's basically to say, hey, I've got a solution and I think you should follow my advice and do this, uh, offer, you know, try this solution. And so the three body paragraphs, 
along with the evidence to support each body paragraph, each uh, topic sentence, should support some answer. The evidence, the citations, the articles that you're bringing in, the ideas coming from the outside source, all of those ideas should support a solution, right? In detail, very specific examples and, and facts about some kind of solution. You don't have to, because here's the thing, you could, right, theoretically, I could develop a whole essay about saying, hey, look, there's a problem. I'm trying to convince you there's a problem, right? You could do that, but we don't want to do that for this assignment. We want to offer a solution. We want to find ways to help at least understand the problem better, but hopefully try to offer some possible solutions, right? Whether it's re related to teaching or learning or materials or technologies or interactional patterns or L1 in the classroom, right? The problem is students are not getting enough exposure to the English language. Or maybe the problem is they're still not able to, to speak after having attended three years of English classes. And I have, let's say I have some research studies to support this problem. So, hey, this is, the, this is it. I'm going to put all of that information into the introduction paragraph. And then I'm going to spend three paragraphs to say why or how, or when, or with whom I can adapt these possible solutions about the L1 to say, okay, maybe it's appropriate to do use L1 here, or maybe I'm going to say, no, there's no L1. It's all L2, and here are three ways to do that, whatever my solution is. All right, so I want to focus again. I want to emphasize the importance of this type of essay as being, yes, it's an argumentative essay. Yes, we're going to introduce different arguments, the initial argument, the counter argument, and the rebuttals, but it's all about trying to say, hey, there's, I've got a solution here. I want to offer this solution to this problem, and I'm going to provide details and examples as to how this happens or why this happens or when this happens. And, and, and again, in the thesis statement, guys, most, in fact, all of us are generally choosing one of the question words, right? All of us, a lot of us are using the connector because to state why something happens. But you could also state how something happens. You could also, in the body paragraphs, you could mix different question words depending when you get into the details. Maybe the whole basis is explaining why something happens. But if you insert some how in there also, if you have like evidence that supports how something happens and you're combining the how and the why, that's great. Nothing wrong with that. Even when something happens, because we're getting into the details. So you might say why something happens and then provide some, some evidence and give, or give some examples of also how and, and with whom and, and maybe even when during the class. Right, so that's okay, that's fine, right? If you want to provide that level of detail, depending on what you want to say, depending on your body paragraph, it always comes back to the body paragraph. All right, so this is the main emphasis for today, guys, uh, that I want you to think about. And I uploaded a, another forum because I, I really want to zero in on again this the evidence the idea of what is evidence and your topic sentence and so if you want to submit i'm i'm asking everyone to submit it's not for a grade but i think this will help you at least provide some uh clarification if it's needed but there's a forum in our virtual classroom in fact let me share my screen i'll show you here if you go to week 11, scroll down, I've added a second form for the second body paragraph. So for those of you who uploaded your something for your first body paragraph, I left some comments. If you have something for your second paragraph, feel free to upload it. But I encourage everyone 
if you're really struggling with not sure if evidence is stating specific examples or details, if you're, if you're still struggling with this idea, I highly recommend that you upload just one example of one of your three topic sentences and include just the example, this, just the paraphrase and the citation for that one topic sentence. And if you want to label each of those pieces of evidence that you're including in your submission as answering how or answering why or answering when, this will also help me see if 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 we're on the same page, right? And 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 if this might help clarify, I I encourage you to use this forum to upload your examples, right? And it could be just copy and paste whatever you have, upload that first before you, and before you even deal with the analysis sentences, all right? A lot of the comments that I made for the first body paragraph, I just made regarding the evidence. I didn't talk really about the analysis because I felt like well, maybe we need to look again at the evidence just to make sure that we're providing very concrete, detailed examples. In most cases, I think in many cases, you can use the same articles, right? It's not a matter of not finding the right articles in many cases. It's just not finding the, the right type of information from, that, from, those, art, from those articles. So... Let me give you an example. When you look at studies, all of your research, all of your citations, I should say, should be coming from peer-reviewed journal articles. They should be studies, right? So they should have a, uh, some sort of uh, literature review or theoretical framework. All of your articles should have a section on the meth or about the methodology or, or method. They, they tend to call it different things, but Basically, they collected data, they chose participants for the study, they collected data, they analyzed it, and then they provided the results and their conclusions and their implications. So when you're looking for spe the specifics, go for the results and the specific uh, discussion about those results. And a lot of times you'll find what you're looking for in that section of your, your articles. Not so much, you know, probably not in the, the theory, probably not even in the method section. It's not even that important, right? Because if, if I, the reader, want to know more about the, the research, if I want to really know, you know, all the details about the study, how many participants, you know, was it a mixed method and all of, that, all of those types of details, well, I'm going to go to your references and I'm going to look up the, the, the study myself and I'll look that up. For our purposes, you don't need all that information. You need the details. You need the results. You need their interpretation of those specific results and how those results relate to your topic, your topic sentences. All right, so start with the same articles that you've been using before you think that you need to, to find another article, right? It's probably in there someplace, but it's ju it just needs to be a little bit more specific. All right, so I don't know if you guys have any questions about this idea of evidence and how evidence, the role that evidence plays within the body paragraph. Any questions, guys? All right. Well, if there are no more questions, I want to give you guys some time today to continue working depending on where you're at, okay, depending on the challenges that you're facing. Um, okay, there's a question here. How many evidence do you, uh, do you have to say that we have in each paragraph? So uh, I'm not giving a number of how many pieces of evidence or how many sentences you should have in each body paragraph, but uh, you need to have 
at least one in each of your paragraphs, except for the conclusion, right? And we're probably going to need at least five references. That's five articles, five sources, at least five. And, you know, if we, we talked about the different combinations of the initial cl claim and the counterclaim and the rebuttal or the, or the main argument and the objection and the reply, okay? So each one of those three are going to be considered citations. All right, so we're probably going to have, uh, you know, you're going to have at least five to six citations throughout, probably closer to, to six, because you're going to have, you're going to need those initial encounter and rebuttals in some combination throughout the three body paragraphs. And we looked at different combinations in prior classes, like what that, you know, different options, right? It's not that everybody has to have and a, a, a main argument, an objection, and a reply in each of the three. That's not necessarily uh, needed. That you're probably going to have more of a, just a different type of, com you might have two pieces of initial, uh, initial argument in the first paragraph, and you might have an initial and a counter in the second. Okay, so I, I don't want to give you a strict number for each paragraph, because again, I want you to decide how you're going to organize it. it again, it's going to depend on the topic sentence, on whether or not you're going to include just the initial claim, or you're going to need both the initial and the counter for that one point in the first body paragraph. And I want you to try to make that decision. Now, if you're not sure, of course, then that's when we can, you know, that's why I think if you can upload your paragraphs as we go throughout this week, uh, you're going to feel better that you're you're getting feedback throughout the the week instead of just waiting at the very end of the week and you know waiting to get feedback until the until you finish. This is why I think it's very important at least to get feedback from at least one body paragraph before you finish on Saturday, Friday or Saturday. Okay, so that you feel more assured that you're on the right track. And if you're if you're developing a body pair, you know any one of the three body paragraphs, and you're not sure if you have enough evidence for that particular topic sentence, then that's a question then that needs to be brought up, right? Then that's when you can upload it to the forum, or or ask me outside of class or whatever, and get feedback to clarify. But I'd rather take it on a case by case basis, on a paragraph by paragraph basis, so that you know, that it's, it, it's more relevant to your own, your own text. So, all right. So any other questions in general before I go back into the forum and start looking for anyone else who's uploaded their, their work? Any other questions we need to address or doubts? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, guys. I'm not going to share my screen, but I'm going to be in the, the forum in the virtual classroom, again, for attendance purposes. Just a reminder, of course, we're working today in the platform, but uh, if you're not working in the platform, make sure you at least sign in this morning between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning so you get credit for attendance. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. If you guys have questions, you want me to look at something, just go ahead and unmute your mic and okay uh omar i don't know if you can unmute your microphone um 
but I, I have a question. Basically, what what is? I'm curious what the the main focus of this paragraph, uh, what you would like it to be like. If you can tell me again the the focus maybe of this particular body paragraph and how it relates to the other two body paragraphs, um, that would that would help. I think my general observation at this point is that the idea the body the um, the topic sentence is a little bit too general and uh, I I think that you just need to be uh, a little bit more specific in the evidence that you're using. Uh, you say the Facebook groups as a teaching learning environment and education will focus on supervision of bachelor students. So I, I just don't know if, if you're, what you mean by supervision of bachelor students, exactly what the, the main specific point is. Again, this is for one paragraph. This is not for an entire essay. You could easily spend, you could write a book on how Facebook helps students communicate in their daily lives, right? I mean, are we only, maybe you only want to focus on classroom situation, right? Instead of everyday lives, right? Or, you know, what is it about Facebook and communication that is very specific to your thesis statement? Because I feel like maybe this topic sentence is even gener more general than your thesis statement. What do, you, what do you think? I don't know if you have a mic. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, well, yeah, my, well, the uh, paragraph is that the, to show that students can communicate properly on Facebook, so, Based on, on this, well, I think that I'm I sorry. To... I'm sorry, Omar. You said your the goal is to explain how students can use Facebook to me, to communicate how mm -hmm. uh, between each other to have like a, a a better understanding on the class outside of the classroom. Okay. Or well, notice that you haven't said anything about outside the classroom. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a that's an important detail that you don't have that you don't mention. Like using Facebook okay. for students to communicate now outside of the classroom, right? To compliment. Now, I still feel like communication is a little bit general, but at least you're indicating that it's outside the classroom because you don't even mention classroom here, let mm -hmm. alone outside the classroom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's 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 one thing i still think that there's there's got to be another aspect of this that we need to be more specific about but i think that's a good start is to at least start by saying that um uh, and i don't think you need to say the platform you can just say facebook you know helps students communicate or interact in some way outside of the classroom i i still think we need another piece to this but but at least we can say that it's it's going on outside of the classroom now in the evidence let's let's just focus on the evidence that you have now what kind of evidence can you find that talks about how or or even what your, you know, an example of what this would look like, and and or 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 when this works well, or but we need like details of how Facebook is helpful for students. I guess English language students mm, yes. outside of the, the the classroom, and and are we talking about a specific? aspect of communication because again communication can be reading writing listening speaking grammar pronunciation vocabulary nonverbal communication those that's those are eight different domains of learning a language and you could easily choose one of those domains for this entire essay just mm -hmm. one of those no okay yes right and or or at least maybe two out of those eight 
But when you say students communicate, right, you're talking eight at least different domains of communication. There's so many different ways of, of communicating, especially if we're talking about an English language learning classroom. You know, you know, as, as, as a teacher of English, we've got a lot of things to deal with. It's not just listening, speaking with our students. We got to help them with the reading and the writing and their grammar and their vocabulary and their pronunciation and their eye contact and their hand gestures and their intonation. And their all of these things are, are brought in together. And when we're trying to help some, you know, help our learners to develop a an additional language. So this is what I want you to think about, not only for this topic sentence, but all of your topic sentences, and maybe even going back to your thesis statement, looking at that, making sure that you're okay with the level of how specific you're, you're being in the, your topic sentences, your thesis statement, and then later your evidence, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can make your topic sentence more specific, then the next your next uh, job is to look at your evidence to see how your evidence can be more specific that talks about how something happens, why something happens, when something happens, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then just uh, also make sure that you're, you have at least five sentences for each paragraph. You only have three sentences in this paragraph. Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but all right, so if you have something else or if you want to upload in that other forum, either in this, par in this body paragraph or another body paragraph, an example of some evidence sentences that you have with your topic sentence, we can look at that again and, and see how you're, you're doing with that. Yeah, I will make some changes and I will upload it again to the forum so you can check it again, please. Okay, very good. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to share my screen again um, to show if you're not sure where to find the recordings for all of our classes. If you go into Microsoft Teams under our work, uh, writing workshop team, under the general tab, you'll notice along the top we have different tabs. And if you look over to what, where it says writing videos, let me see here. Let's see if it loads up here. This should be linked to a playlist, although it's not opening up at the moment. This should be the link to the playlist. Uh, let's see if we open this up here. Yeah, if you want, if you're having problems viewing the videos, which it looks like I'm having the, this problem, I just clicked go to the website. So make sure you've selected writing videos and then click here where it says go to the website and then this should open up in your browser the, the playlist. And hopefully this is sorted by date let me double check here sort by and then the newest along the top that's how i would do it like if you're in your browser just sort it by date the newest towards the top and then you should see all of the videos that are related to the class so so that's how you can find the uh, playlist. Again, I'm not sure why it's not showing up here. Maybe just my connection. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but you can do. You can still access it by just uh, selecting "Go to the website." Teacher, I think I have some problems trying to be more specific in my topic sentence of my first paragraph. 
So I don't know if you can help me to try to figure out how can I. Okay, is this uh, the one that you uploaded uh, yeah. in the forum? All right. So, so yeah, this is like, and for me, of your three points, this is the one that uh, I'm struggling with the most, and because it's it's so general, and I really am trying to find ways for you to connect this with peer and self correction because I, I still feel like it's just kind of out there by itself and it's still really general but um providing indirect feedback da -da -da -da, and improving accuracy in writing tasks all right so it is it is supposed mm -hmm. that i'm focused on uh teacher feedback and by doing that well what providing feedback from the teacher is supposed that they acquire or improve their writing accuracy that's what i'm trying to say okay so if if that's your if that's the idea well then i would say that in your topic sentence because you're not you're not really saying that i think that's a great idea what you just explained to me i'm i get it that's you're you're basically saying that's teacher feedback it's like expert feedback so to speak right it's 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 teacher feedback as as opposed to student feedback as opposed to self feedback and so for me that makes perfect sense but that's not what you're saying here you don't mention uh teacher feedback well you say indirect from making them i think what's what's misleading here is you're saying that improves accuracy in the writing task yeah. i think that throws everything off because you don't mention uh, unless accuracy is the main focus for for the whole essay and if it is i i don't know i don't remember now offhand if you included that in your thesis statement in in the opinion you know and if that's the if that's the focus for your whole essay that's fine right but i i think what's throwing me is uh i i would be more explicit in this body paragraph saying and and call it whatever you want to call it whatever they whatever you're finding in your articles you know if they call it expert feedback or teacher feedback or i would say something like that like the term i would use that term instead of just saying indirect written feedback from english language teachers i feel like because the whole focus is to distinguish this body paragraph this idea from feedback that comes from students themselves versus feedback that comes from the individual student herself or okay. himself and so you want to really make this distinction very clear in these topic sentences so there's no room for misinterpretation that is super clear so if and by doing that i mean by providing teacher feedback i want in that paragraph to discuss that they will improve their writing accuracy but just I mentioned that just like in that paragraph. I don't know if I should say it in the topic sentence or or not. You don't know if you should state the, the writing accuracy in, in the topic sentence because I think in that paragraph I focus on that. Okay, so let's look at so your first evidence here. Let's see, you've got all right. All right, let, let me ask you the, a question in a slightly different way. So um, thinking about the other two body paragraphs, the one paragraph that's going to focus on self-assessment and the other paragraph that's going to focus on peer assessment, are you also concerned about writing accuracy or written accuracy or no? Uh, yes, I think I mentioned something related. Okay. Or to put into practice, like uh, the critical thinking to make uh, students well to have accuracy in writing assignments or something like that. Yeah. All right. Um, all 
All right. So, so in this paragraph, you, you can focus on accuracy and coming from teacher feedback. Okay. Maybe another paragraph you focus on critical thinking and what was it? Peer, uh, peer assessment or the self assessment? The next one is peer assessment. Okay. But which paragraph did you talk about critical thinking in? I mentioned critical thinking in the three paragraphs, like oh. a little bit of it. Oh, okay. Well, so it, 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 here's the thing. Like if, if you're going to be talking about critical thinking in all three paragraphs, then you might include critical thinking in your opinion, in your thesis statement. You see what I mean? Like I'm, I'm looking for that other aspect, that other key word, right? So you, accuracy is one key word. Critical thinking is a key word. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, what about peer? So, all right. So tell me again, peer assessment, uh, you're focusing on critical thinking, all three paragraphs, you're going to focus on critical thinking, correct? I mentioned critical thinking in my paragraph. In, okay. But in the evidence, like you're and mentioning then, critical thinking in the evidence. No, not in the evidence. I mean, like, when trying to explain that evidence, I try to mention like with my own words what I believe. And okay, so that won't be evidence then, right? Because evidence. No, no, no. All right, so, so that's what I would need to look at. Like, if you're going to mention, here's the thing: words like accuracy, critical thinking. This only should be mentioned or brought up if you have evidence that relates to these keywords, right? You should not bring up critical thinking, for example, if the evidence that you are talking about, because that's what an analysis sentence is, or that's what it's, uh, that's the function of it. If you don't mention, if you don't have critical thinking in the evidence, then I wouldn't discuss it or comment on it in your analysis, okay? So just as an observation, right? So even with accuracy, words like accuracy, critical thinking, these, these are keywords that are relevant to specific aspects of learning that are important, but you don't want to just use these words unless you, you have specific evidence to support these keywords. All right, so as I'm looking at your example here, the main objective to improve learners' accuracy in written assignments, the best option is to provide indirect feedback. So this leads me to like the next um, question here. So if you're looking for direct, indirect feedback, we basically need examples of indirect feedback from teachers that helps with accuracy, like how does well, how does this happen, right? How does it like? Is there an example? Can you provide an example of a direct and in, indirect feedback from teachers that help with accuracy, right? From the articles. That that would be my my question. All right, to to explain at least or to provide at least one example of how, either what it is or or how it works. Right, because maybe the readers are going to ask, "Well, what do you mean by indirect feedback? What is this? And how does it just how does it how does it work?" Right. Instead of uh, the main objective is to improve learners' accuracy in written assignments. Notice that your evidence, your your you're basically saying the same thing as your topic sentence. Instead of providing an example. Right, so think about an example of indirect feedback that would help with accuracy or with critical thinking or whatever other key word, right, that you come up with. And this is why, uh, why I suggest to all of you is to look at your articles again. And if you have to modify your topic sentence, mo modify your topic sentence, but let the articles help you decide on 
what it is that you're talking about. If you want to talk about accuracy in all, all the paragraphs or just two of the paragraphs, it all depends on the evidence. Learners do not use critical thinking to solve errors. Learners do not make use of their critical. All right, so notice that the second piece of evidence that you have here is more about the problem. Teachers may commit mistakes to create an opinion. Again, I feel like we need to look again for examples of indirect feedback. And just try to, I, you know, I, I think you should be able to find some, some good examples. No, have you, do you feel that you have examples of indirect feedback from teachers that help improve accuracy? Mm, yes, well, I need to check again. <laughs> okay. Because I think this is this is this would make this paragraph really interesting if you can provide some examples of let's say, you know I don't know they, um, it might even be through recasts or how they they don't give out the answer directly maybe they write something on the board that has the student kind of think about what they wrote and and they they work it out themselves but some different, or maybe it's even the way they use coding to provide indirect feedback so they don't come right out and tell the student what the error is, but they just give them, maybe they highlight the text and say, okay, take a look at this, or, or maybe they give some hints to what the problem relates to. Okay, and, and I bet in these same articles or some similar articles, you, you should be able to find some good examples of of indirect from from teachers i think uh this particular paragraph there's probably more examples or more articles on this one than probably your other two but if uh, going back to what we talked about earlier if you want to talk about accuracy in one paragraph and critical thinking in another paragraph that's fine all right you don't have to talk about the same concept in all three paragraphs you can if you want to, but you don't have to. But I just want you to uh, focus on what those keywords are and that the evidence addresses those, those key ideas. Again, this example of accuracy, you know, what, what's a good example of, you know, of a study that addresses accuracy with the actual you know the mistakes themselves not necessarily vocabulary maybe but grammatical accuracy for me accuracy deals a lot with with grammar right and and even just the mechanics of writing capitalization maybe even punctuation perhaps So think about it, uh, Caro, and if you have another example or another paragraph, or if you want to use the other forum where you're just matching, trying to match evidence to different topic sentences, if that helps, can, then go ahead and upload something there and we can, I can take a look at it. If you have something later today that you want me to look at, let me know. If we need to discuss this further later today, let me know and we can talk about it some more. But uh, do you see where, what I'm after here? Do you see what I'm referring to? Yes, teacher, I think I know what I have to change. I'm sorry? Yeah, I think I know what I have to change. To part okay. All part right. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, guys, uh, we're getting close to the end of class. Um, uh, we'll continue tomorrow with uh, reviewing your work. We're looking at uh, hopefully some new body paragraphs. Go ahead and try to upload if you haven't already. Uh, some of your paragraphs and bring in your questions. If you want me to uh, look at specific pieces of evidence, use the forum to uh, upload matching your evidence to your topic sentences and we can take a look at that if that's a, if that's a, a challenge for you at this point. But uh, try to continue writing and um, Again, let me know if you need something outside of class, if you want me to look at uh, part of your text. And uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll continue with uh, finishing up your, your first draft. Okay, Teacher, can I, I'm sorry, can I ask something really quickly? Yes, go ahead. Just to confirm, um, for example, in my first paragraph, 
can I talk about the initial, uh, uh, my initial point? And in the second paragraph, I can talk about the initial and the counter. And in my third paragraph, I can talk about the initial, the counter, and then the rebuttal. Is that correct? Yes, uh, theoretically, yes, you can, you can do that. Right. There's no with that organizational pattern. There's nothing wrong with it as long as each of the, for example, the counter is talking directly and explaining what's weak about the initial and the rebuttals explaining what's weak about the counter. But yes, that that's that's a possibility. Yes. Okay. Perfect, teacher. Thank you. Okay. All right. You're welcome. All right, guys. We'll stop there for uh, today. And we'll see everybody tomorrow, and we'll continue on with uh, developing our first draft of our argumentative essay. Thanks, guys. Enjoy uh, the rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. You too. Thank you, teacher.